we're going to go over the three things you absolutely need to know to book your next or first remote closing job that you can make 10, 15, or even $20,000 plus every single month. Let's talk about it. All right. What's going on? Aaron here from the remote closing Academy and guys do not share this video with Cole Gordon, my business partner, the founder of the remote closing Academy, because we're giving away some juicy details in this video. Some of which were only really supposed to be for our private clients, but um, shh, don't tell them I'm doing this. So in this video, we're going to go over number one, how to find these remote closing jobs that are paying 10, 15, 20,000 a month. Number two, we're going to talk about what to include in your application to make sure it's a home run. And number three, we're going to show you how to make sure that the offer is actually good and worth going for. So you're not wasting your time. So let's go into number one. All right. So let's pop over here to my screen. I'm going to show you guys how simple it is to find some of these jobs as long as you know these secrets along the way. So first things first is we're going to go to indeed. So indeed.com you're going to make an account and all you're going to do is search for high ticket closer. And you can see it's already in my uh, search results. So I'm going to click find jobs. And also you can put remote here if you want to. And I want you to look at this first thing that pops up here and Jeff zoom in on this so people can see 20,000 to $45,000 a month. Now, are you, you know, guaranteed that money? Obviously not. And I'm sure that there's some different qualifications and different things that you have to follow when you go through this application. But I mean, if they're advertising 20 to 45,000 a month, like you're going to be looking pretty good, even if you hit minimum KPI, which would be, you know, in this case would be 20,000 a month. Um, so you scroll down here, we have a sales coach five to 7,000 a month, 20 to 50,000 a month. I mean, guys, I, I literally didn't have to scroll past the first three on here. <laughs> so if you just go in and, and apply for, you know, five of these a day, you're almost guaranteed to get something in a couple of days, at least at the very least a response from some of these companies. So again, you can click into each of these. You can look at some of these uh, different results. Also, let's just say you wanted to go in for an appointment setting position. You can do high ticket appointment setter as your search term. You can do remote there as well. I mean, you can turn off remote sometimes and you might get different results. Um, but you know, we have again, high ticket. Well, this is still closer, uh, appointment setter, appointment setter, 38 to 45,000 a year. But keep in mind, obviously appointment setter is a little bit more entry level, but I mean, where are you going to get an entry level position where you don't have to have a college degree? You know, you don't have to put a hundred, 200, $300,000 in the college. As long as you have, you know, a good application and you can like nail the interviews, you can be doing 70,000 a year. No problem. Now we'll make an entirely different video on exactly what to add to the different applications. So we're not going to go too deep into that. Now, this is just to show you where to find these jobs. So next up, we're going to go to LinkedIn. You're going to sign in. You're going to click jobs right here up at top. And I actually did this search a couple days ago and you're seeing, you know, recent job searches over the last two days, there's been 5,000 new appointment setter jobs that have opened up and 1400 new high ticket closer jobs that are opening up. So there is literally no drought of people that are looking for this stuff. So you just put in high ticket closer after you click the jobs. Um, and of course within the United States or wherever you're from. And I mean, they can literally scroll in here. Actually, this is funny. Closers.io. That's our company. <laughs> so we're actively hiring and looking for setters and closers. So at the very least you could even, um, you know, you go into, into one of those, but I mean, if you scroll in here, guys, like there's so many different opportunities that you can take advantage of. There's 40 different pages. If you zoom in here, Jeff as well, 26,000 people, 26,000 results of high ticket closer. And then if we just do the appointment setter one again, because again, I did this uh, appointment setter. I did this experiment the other day. We're going to see 76,000 results of people that are looking for this. So if those 80,000 results and those, those two different ones are not enough for you, I'm going to show you one more. We're going to go over to Facebook and we're going to go to the click funnels group here. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Um, so you just click, go to click funnels and then filter by group. So I can show you, just type in click funnels, search it up. You're going to filter by group. And the only thing you need to do is when you go into this group, you are going to click the search bar right here. You're going to search up hiring and I'm gonna show you guys how easy this is. So this one right here, uh, we're hiring appointment setters. So 5,000 to 25,000 is the offer price. You can be making anywhere from 500, 2,500 per sale, um, hiring two closers right here. So, uh, hiring four sales reps for industry leading offer right here, looking for high ticket closers. We're hiring appointment setters for Facebook, earning potential three to 10 K a month again, as a entry level position. So as long as you guys just go out here and look for them on these three sites and you just put out, you know, two, three, five, ten applications a day, if you're really looking for it, I could almost guarantee you could land at least an interview within 
two to five days tops. So now that we talked about where you can find these jobs, let's talk about what to include in your application to make sure that it's a home run every single time. And first we'll talk about traits. Now, obviously these companies are going to want you to be hungry, excited. They're going to want you to be professional and also confident in your ability to win. Now here's, here's a really, really, really big piece kind of sticks out. And, and I want to be clear about this is you can land and get interviews as long as you have confidence and conviction of your abilities, maybe not necessarily to sell, but to be the best that there could be. And if you can just present that in an interview, like literally you could just be coming from high school, from college, like no experience needed at all. If you land that part of it, you are golden. Trust me, it works every single time. Now, the next part you want to talk about in your application is your sales experience. Now, you got to be transparent here. If you've never been in sales, that's completely fine. You just got to be open and honest about that because they're going to tell if you've been in sales or not. They're going to ask for different referrals and, and references. So just tell the truth. It's not going to hold you back as long as you follow some of the other things I'm talking about. But if you do have sales experience, of course, it's going to be a really massive help because that's one of the first things that they're looking for. So talk about your experience in door to door or real estate or insurance or whatever you did in the past and talk about it in detail. Talk about the numbers that you did. Talk about the amount of sales calls you did every single day. Talk about, you know, your closing percentage, really dig deep into all that because those are the questions that they want answered to see if you're a good fit. Now, for those of you that, you know, a lot of you watching this probably don't have a ton of previous sales experience. So take anything you've done in the past and relate that back to your excitement and your hunger to really see success within that remote closing position. And again, you're going to at least nail that first interview or, or get, uh, you know, booked the first interview and just use anything you've done in the past. So let's say you're, you're coming out of college or you're coming out of high school and you got good grades or, uh, you know, recently I talked to this one, uh, this one kid that I knew was going to absolutely crush it. He's 18 years old, um, but he used to be an, on a sports team. And I know high school sports, really sports in general are demanding. There's a lot of work ethic that goes involved. You know, it's, it's early mornings and late nights with practice and games and, and commitment to that kind of stuff. So that's someone that I know that's probably going to crush it because they're young, they're hungry. They've been committed to something for a long amount of time already. And uh, they already have that winner mentality. Let's say you've worked in a restaurant in the past and maybe you were a manager there. Maybe you hit sales records, or maybe you were just a really, really good at your job, whatever it may be. Just talk about how that experience and that thing helped you in other areas of your life. And just think about how the skills that you learned in that job are going to help in the current position. Now I'm not going to sit here and say that it's going to be really easy to create an application if you haven't had sales experience, but keep in mind, if this is a position where you're going to make five, 10, 15, $20,000, I think it's worth putting in an afternoon or maybe even a day, really refining the different stories and the different things that you learn for your past sales experience, or maybe not necessarily sales experience, but just life experiences that will help you in the current position that you're applying for. Now, the next thing you want to include is your availability. So are you available part-time or are you available full-time? I will say that some of these companies that are aggressively looking to get someone hired and as a remote setter or a closer, they're going to want full availability. And because the more time that they have to really build you up, right? Build you up as a closer or a setter, obviously they're going to choose for that, right? Also, if they're aggressively looking to scale their company, they're going to want you to have a full calendar of, you know, five, seven, eight calls a day, as opposed to if you're part-time and they can only give you two or three, they're going to much rather pick the person that's more full-time. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, just being honest with them and, and transparent because the last thing you want to do is say, yeah, I have full, full availability and then also have like a full-time job. And they're like, wait, your only open calendar spots are like eight and nine and 10 PM. <laughs> so again, just be open about it. I'll tell you a really quick story that I think this will drive it home. There's actually a teacher is named Nathan. Um, he jumped in the remote closing Academy and he was only available at nighttime hour. So eight, nine, 10 PM. Now the offer that he was selling to though, it was a biz up offer where a lot of the people that needed to be on those calls was later in the evening because they were also working individuals. So it worked out to where he was doing, you know, three to four calls a night after 8 PM. And he was still able to make in his second month, $17,000 super part-time. So again, don't feel like if you say you're going to work part-time that it's going to pull that much away from your opportunity because in some circumstances, it just works out perfectly. Now, the last little piece of what to include in your application, and this is a little secret and uh, it's a bonus, the ninja tactic that you can employ in these applications. And that is to film a video interview or not interview, but a video application essentially. So what you're going to do is in the application, you're going to pull up your phone and you're going to record a selfie video, basically saying all the things within your uh, within your application. So you're going to say, what's going on? My name is, you know, Aaron. Uh, this has been my past experience. I'm really excited to get, you know, to at least learn a little bit more about your offer because, you know, I love the idea because of this, this, and this, um, this is my past experiences. This is why I really could think, you know, or this is why I really think that I could be an asset to your team. Again, I'm just kind of making this stuff on the spot, but just going over the application, all the things that you talked about in your 
application. And again, this really plays to anyone. I'd say this is almost mandatory for anyone that doesn't have sales experience because the way that you present yourself on camera, the way that you show up, it shows that initiative. And then also if they can hear your voice and see your face and see, okay, like, you know, and they hear the way that you speak, that's really where the majority of sales comes from, right? You can be the best salesperson in the world, but if you sound like a monotone Monica and you don't have like, it's just not gonna play off well. So if you can just at least look the part just a little bit and uh, you know put on maybe a nice colored shirt and maybe not this bright, but you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> you know, it just adds a little bit of extra spice onto your application and helps you, especially if you don't have that experience and you can just show up in that way. Now guys, let's talk about the last piece here, number three, and I want you to just take, take away all distractions, just really focus in on me. You get a piece of paper if you need to, but this is the one thing that you 100% need to get right so you don't waste time and you don't waste the opportunity cost of finding the right offer for you. So we're gonna go over what to look for in these offers, the questions to ask, and how you basically don't waste your time. Now, where these questions are gonna come up is any interview process, usually they'll ask you a ton of questions and then they'll open it up at the end for you to ask them questions, right? And these are really the three ones that you wanna ask. Number one is you wanna ask them about their inbound lead flow. What that means is you wanna be able to understand where their leads for their company are coming from. The last thing you wanna do if you ask this question and they say, well, we don't have any leads for you, but we're just gonna like, we're gonna give you some phone numbers to call. Run for the hills, <laughs> do not accept that because there's just so many companies out there that will have inbound warm lead flow for you. So what that means is they'll be running ads to a specific video or a webinar, or they'll have a following on Instagram or YouTube or TikTok. So when there's people coming into that funnel, right, the funnel per se, is these are people that already somewhat understand and know the person. So it makes your job as an appointment setter or a closer so much easier. So if you're a setter, then obviously the phone numbers of the people you're calling are gonna be warmer. And then if you're a closer, it's gonna make your job a million times easier because that person knows at least a little bit of what they are there for, right? They know what they're opting into. So again, just make sure that they have some sort of inbound lead flow that could be through any of those examples that I gave. And there's a couple different other ways that, you know, they might generate leads, but just make sure that, uh, again, it's inbound and you're not having to reach out to people, cold call, you know, pull up the yellow pages and, uh, and do it that way. I personally, if you want to call, talk to cold people all day, that's fine. But in my personal opinion, I would not do that. I wouldn't waste the time doing that. Second, kind of like 1.5, a version of that is just asking how many calls are they booking on the cl current closers calendars? So, so again, if you're depending on your part-time or full-time, you just want to ask how many calls are getting booked on your calendar. What that's going to do is give you more opportunity, right? There's a very different opportunity if, you know, they're booking five to six calls in your calendar a day versus one or two, right? The more calls that you have, obviously you're going to have more opportunity to close them down. And if they're not booking a ton of calendars, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just when you're filtering through these different offers and let's say one of them is giving you two calls a day and another is giving you six or seven you're probably gonna wanna more to more go towards the six or seven because again, more opportunity, more ability to make money for you, and you're able to stay in the place of abundance versus scarcity on your sales calls. The next thing that you wanna figure out is really, it's kind of a two-parter. Number one is what industry is this offer in? And then is the owner actually passionate about the industry? So I'll answer the second part first because it's a little easier, is you wanna ask them and like how long have they been doing it, right? Are they actually passionate about that industry? Because that a lot of times is gonna play into the success of the overall business. So let's say, you know, they're kind of a fly by night agency and they haven't really been doing it in a while. And uh, you know, you can just tell they're not super passionate about it. I, I'd be a little bit hesitant about that because you're not going to really be able to play and, and build into their vision and their overall just like company values and things like that. So you got to, they got to be passionate about it, at least for the ones that I want to work for. The second part of that that I mentioned is what industry is it? So great example of ones that I wouldn't really go into, and, and you could take this with a grain of salt, but just my own personal experiences. Let's say you're selling for a, you know, a real estate coaching offer, for example. Right now, the real estate market, depending on who you ask, isn't looking the greatest, right? And what it does is, again, if they're selling to real estate agents, is real estate agents, from what I'm seeing right now, is a lot of them are pulling away from the marketing from the seller, you know, transitioning from the sellers to the buyer's market. So if it's gonna make it harder in your life, then I, maybe I wouldn't jump too deep into that. Same thing with an industry like cryptocurrency. Let's say this business you're gonna potentially sell for is selling a cryptocurrency coaching offer. Now, if you're doing that, you know, a year or two years ago, like that would have been popping, like really, really easy to sell. But as a closer or a setter for something in these times where there's a ton of volatility and, uh, you know, there's a bunch of these like different coins that are going up and down and, and rug pulls and all this kind of stuff, I personally wouldn't touch that industry with a 10 foot pole, but um, 
again, just wanted to keep keep that uh, on the forefront of your mind when you're going through and filtering these offers. Now, the last and certainly not least last point, I think this is honestly one of the most important, is the fact and asking them the questions of, you know, what type of testimonials or case studies or what type of track record does this company have within the agency? Again, this is extremely important for a couple of reasons. Number one, you want to be able to see case studies and testimonials and people that have gone through that program before and have actually achieved that end result. And the more people that have seen that end result, the way easier it's going to be not only for you to sell because those case studies and testimonials are what they are seeing before the call during the call you can share different experiences of you know with that potential prospect and it helps them get over that that roadblock a little bit but it also subconsciously helps you as the salesperson because if you know down in the deep soul depth of your heart i don't think that's the right expression but if you know deep down that this person is on the phone call with you and you can help them and change their life and get them to where they are to where they want to be, it turns you from a salesperson into a, a literally a problem solver or a doctor in their problem. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know where these analogies are coming from, but you, you get what I'm saying. If you can be sold in the product and the potential client can be sold into the product, it just makes it so much easier on you to bring them in. At the end of the day, you're going to have them coming back to you, thanking you for selling them. And I, I just, I, I can't think of any better feeling than that. Now, with all this information in mind, you might be asking, okay, should I start as an appointment setter or a closer? Which one makes more money? Like, which is going to be the best option for me? Well, if you check out the video that's popped up on screen, that's going to break down the entire process of the differences between the two, uh, the money-making opportunities for both of them, and uh, which one could potentially be for you if you're looking to jump in as a setter or closer. So make sure to click the video on screen and we'll see you over there.